What is it? The death chill. The power to kill by fear itself. Your veins turn to rivers of ice. Your bones crack. And the last thing you see is your own tear ducts freezing up. Hello everyone, welcome to another movie review. I just got done seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh, this is the fourth film in the Ghostbusters canon. Uh, we're not talking about that other movie that, you know, I refuse to watch. Um, <laughs> um, and this is a follow-up to 2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I was a huge fan of, as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel. Um, the first Ghostbusters is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's uh, in my top ten. I think it's like number eight or nine, something like that. Um, Ghostbusters 2 is a, a good sequel. You know, I actually really like Ghostbusters 2. A lot of people don't like that movie, but um, I've never had an issue with it. You know, I understand people's reasons as to why they don't like it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've always been a fan of Ghostbusters 2. And then, of course, Afterlife, which came out three years ago, which is kind of crazy to think. Um, <laughs> time is just flying by. Um, I was a big fan of that one, too. I think I gave it, like, a 9 out of 10. You know, it didn't quite live up to the hype, obviously, because... As a lifelong fan of Ghostbusters and always wanting a third Ghostbusters movie, that movie, it, it would be impossible to live up to the hype. And if you watched my review for that back when I did it, you already know I said all this already. Um, it was It's literally impossible for Ghostbusters 3 to live up <laughs> to the hype after so many years. Um, now this one, of course, is a follow-up to Afterlife. We get the same characters again and the returning old characters, obviously, too, which is really good. Um... I was thinking in my head how I could, like, explain how I felt about this movie, and I think I found a good way to explain it. Um, this movie's been getting a lot of negative reviews. Like, uh, people have been bashing this movie, giving it, like, 4 out of 10 and calling it, like, really bad and saying it's terrible and blah, blah, blah. Um, in my opinion, and those of you who watch my channel, you know I'm very generous with scores and everything like that. In my opinion, this movie is a C plus. okay? Now, take that as you will. Like I said, I give movies great scores, so me saying this is a C plus, you might think, okay, that means it must be an F. You know, it must be terrible. Um, I genuinely think um, this movie is not as bad as other people are saying, okay? Um, it has problems. And the two big problems for me were, number one, the pacing. The pacing of this movie felt very off. Um, something about it, like the... F I want to say somewhere in the second act of this movie, um, the pacing was just totally, totally weird. Like, the first act and the third act, I think, were fine. But, like, the second act, the pacing was... I don't know. It was hard to explain. It was just... It, it didn't flow properly, um, in my opinion. Um, number two, I feel like the way the movie resolves... Um, there was a lot of build-up towards this uh, villain. The main villain of this movie is actually pretty pretty scary you know um not terrifying but very like intimidating and you know effective i think um the villain wasn't done poorly in my opinion it's just i feel like the way the movie wraps up there is a lot of build-up there's a lot of um exposition and stuff building up towards the final act of the movie basically and it resolves rather quickly i would say um i don't want to say too much um but I felt like all the buildup was not worth the way it was <gasps> resolved, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, so those are my two big issues. I guess another issue I had, this movie has a lot of characters in it, okay? Now, what I was talking about earlier when I was thinking of a comparison, it's sort of like uh, Jurassic World Dominion, okay? Now, that movie, in my opinion, is worse than this movie. So, I know a lot of people hate Dominion, so... <laughs> It's not that level, um, which Dominion, I didn't totally hate either, you know, I just thought it was totally, like, meh, you know, um, like, Dominion, I think I'd probably give, like, a seven, this is a seven and a half, so slightly better, um, because Dominion had that thing where it has all the new characters and all the old characters, and you think, okay, this has to be good, right, because you have a perfect blend of both, and this movie did the same thing, obviously, you have all the old characters and all the new characters, and even newer characters in this one, um, all together, which, again, is what you want, but something about it felt like, it just felt like something was missing, um, now, for me, 
I feel like because this one wasn't directed by Jason Reitman, who did the last movie, the last movie was easily the best made Ghostbusters movie in terms of production value and direction and all that stuff. Of course, you know, rest in peace to his father, Ivan Reitman, who directed the first two movies. But the first two movies were straight up like goofy comedies, you know. I mean, they had their little, you know, moments of drama in them, obviously. But the last movie was a full-blown, you know, drama, obviously, uh, with comedy in it. And that's another little issue I had with this movie. Um, the comedy in this one, I feel like there wasn't really a lot of it. And when there was, it was either okay or just, you know. This is definitely the weakest one in terms of the comedy, in my opinion, okay? Um, but again, back to what I was saying with the characters. Um, you have, this is this movie is exactly what you would want it to be. But I feel like the way it was done, like the way it was executed isn't what you want it to be, if that makes any sense. So like what I'm saying is, if this movie was the exact same movie with the exact same story and everything, but if it was like directed by Jason Reitman, you know, who is an Oscar nominated director. And like I said, the last one was the best directed movie um, in the franchise. I feel like the movie probably would have been done a little better. And again, the pacing was was weird. I don't know if that was an editing issue. Um, and again, there's just too many characters in the movie. Like there's certain characters that pretty much don't get a lot of development, which, you know, I understand. Um, but I'm not trying to diss the director of this movie, by the way. The guy that directed this is uh, Gil Keenan, who uh, co-wrote the last one, I want to say. Um, and again, the movie's not directed bad. It's just, I feel like if Jason Reitman did it, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. I feel like it would have been a little better, you know. Um, and again, too many characters in the movie. So this is not a spoiler, okay? There are, by my count... Um, 11 Ghostbusters now. Because <laughs> you have the original three guys. You have Janine, who suits up. You know, that's not a spoiler. It's in the trailers and promo photos and whatnot. Um, you have the new four kids. Phoebe, uh, Podcast, Lucky, and Trevor. Okay, so that's eight. And then you have Paul Rudd, Gary. And then you have um, Callie Spangler, the mother. That's ten. And then you have a new guy... Um, I forget his name, the British guy. He's like uh, a lab a lab guy, basically, for the Ghostbusters. Who I, I, I liked his character. Um, he didn't really get a lot of development, but um, he's essentially the 11th Ghostbuster. So there's 11 Ghostbusters in this movie, okay? <laughs> um, and not to mention that, you have um, Kamel Nanjiani in there. You have Patton Oswalt in there. You have this other character that um, befriends Phoebe, which I thought was one of the coolest parts of the movie. I had no idea about this character. You don't see her in any of the trailers or any of the um posters or anything like that um her name is um melody and i'm not going to say too much re regarding her character because it's kind of uh spoilerish but um i thought that was one of the coolest parts of the movie I, I really enjoyed that um the actress did a good job um and then of course you got walter peck returning which again was in the trailer um which you know we could have used a little more of him i guess he does show up a couple times in the movie um <laughs> Uh, bear with me, by the way. I'm dealing with a little runny nose the past couple days, so if I get a, if I start sneezing, you know. Um, again, this movie just had of like too much, too much in. It, again, Dominion. It it was the problem I had with Dominion. There was just too many. There wasn't a good balance of characters, I guess. Um, now, some of the reviews I've saw have been saying some of the characters. Like I saw one review. I forgot who it was. Said Phoebe had no development in this movie. What are you talking about? She literally had an entire character arc in the whole movie. Some people were saying Bill Murray was only in the movie for two seconds. No, Bill Murray shows up more than once in the movie. Um, now, is he the least screen time out of all the old characters? Yes, but that was the same thing in the last movie. So I, I noticed a few things in some of the reviews people were saying that I just flat out disagree with. Um, what else were some people saying? Um, they were saying the Frozen Empire aspect of the movie was was barely anything no um again i'll just say this the way the movie resolves it kind of happens very abruptly abruptly sorry and um it just happens very quickly but the frozen empire part no that is not tiny that is very much a part of the movie um yes like the entirety of manhattan gets affected by that um <laughs> so again some of these reviews i don't know if people were just like just bashing this movie they just didn't like it that much they just wanted to exaggerate things um, yeah, <laughs> so, again, um, it pains me to say this, you know, giving this movie a seven and a half, because, you know, some people might think that's, a, like, a high score. For me, again, that's a C plus. 
I want this movie to be an A, you know, or a B at the very least, um, because I love Ghostbusters, um, you know, this is my least favorite out of the four movies, to be honest, like, the way I would rank them, you know, I just put it on my Letterboxd account if you're not following me on there, the first Ghostbusters is number one, obviously, then I would say Afterlife is number two, then Ghostbusters 2 is number three, and, uh, this would be number four, so... And, uh, and if anyone, of course, watching Afterlife was wondering, is Ghostbusters 2 canon? Because there was a whole debate about that when Afterlife came out. In this movie, yes, Ghostbusters 2 is canon, very much. Um, you'll see early on in the movie, okay, yeah, there is a reference to Ghostbusters 2 that is, you know, it's not subtle in any way. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I was happy to see that. Because um, I love Ghostbusters 2. I've always, I've always loved it. Um... So yeah, like I said, this is my least favorite, unfortunately, out of the four movies. Um, but it wasn't bad. It's just it it really did feel like something was missing, um, and it's hard to explain because again, this movie is it's everything you would want it to be, like a totally original villain, you know, which is good because Afterlife. My main problem with that was they rehashed the Gozer thing. Um, totally original villain. You get all the characters all interacting with each other. And in my opinion, I feel like everybody gets enough screen time. But again, there are some characters that kind of just get put to the back burner. Like, I would say Lucky and Trevor, you know, Finn Wolfhard, those two are probably the two that have the least screen time out of everybody. Um, but I felt like, you know, they were, they had enough time in the last movie. So it's, it's kind of a balance, I guess. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's just the way it was executed again. I feel like if you had Jason Reitman directing this one, I'm going to say that again, <laughs> it would have been a lot better. Um, so if they plan on doing another one, of course I'm going to see it. That's not even, you know, a, an issue for me. Um, I'm always going to go see these movies, obviously, um, aside from the one that shall not be named. Um, yeah, <laughs> so again, seven and a half for me. Um, the last one was a nine, like I said, so... You know, a little bit of a drop in quality. But if they do another one, which I'm sure they will, I'm sure they're going to do at least three movies. You know, I hope this one makes money. Because, um, again, a lot of the reviews were bad. Um, and I should have mentioned, too, the practical effects and everything. That's something I really appreciate about this one and the last one. They really use a lot of practical stuff, and you can tell. And the effects, even the CGI and stuff, it's all very good. It's all done very well. Um the production value of these new movies is top notch, and I said the same thing about um, like however you feel about the new Halloween trilogy or the new Star Wars trilogy. The production quality of those movies was top notch, and that's something you can't debate. And it's the same thing here. Um, and I gotta mention too, the firehouse, the New York setting, um, was awesome. We spent a lot of time in the firehouse in this one, and I want to say it was probably the most we've spent in it in um, any of the movies. Um, so it was very cool. And, you know, I've been in the firehouse on three separate occasions. You know, I'm a huge fan, like I mentioned. So it was cool to see them actually go there. And of course it was a set because, you know, the actual hook and ladder eight in Tribeca, um, is a real firehouse. So they can't film inside of it. And it was never actually filmed inside of to begin with every, every time you saw the inside of the firehouse, it was a set in, um, Los Angeles, I believe. Um, I'm referring to the first two movies. And, and then for this movie, they obviously built a whole brand new set to film inside of. Um, but there are shots of the exterior, obviously, that they filmed in Tribeca. So um, it's very cool to see that, you know, because the last one obviously was set in Oklahoma. And, you know, we had it was a whole different setting. Um, so, yeah, I was very happy. Everything in that regard. And, of course, Slimer, you know. Everything felt like New York Ghostbusters again. And, of course, they do go back to the library, which was in the trailer. Um, so again, the New York setting was very much appreciated. Um, I really love that. So, um, I don't really have much else to say. I'm not going to do a spoiler section either. Um, cause I feel like, you know, it's, it, there's nothing really worth talking about. Um, cause again, I am slightly underwhelmed with this movie. Um, I wanted it to be at least, you know, a B, like I said, um, but it's okay. It's fine. Um, but again, in my humble opinion, this movie is not as bad as other people are saying. So please don't don't be you know afraid. Uh, if you're like a huge fan and you're worried, like oh no, is this movie gonna be bad? Um, you've probably seen it already at this point. You know, before I even film this review, um, if you're a diehard fan. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. And I saw it at AMC and I picked up the uh, the cool bucket here. <laughs> so uh, really cool. It's a ghost trap. It lights up. 
um, is a switch on the bottom here. So get the switch and it lights up like this. So that's pretty cool. You can put the popcorn inside. Um, it actually does have wheels on it, so you can roll it on the floor. Um, yeah, very cool. And then you can detach this, and it does open and close. So it's literally a cool ghost trap replica. So <laughs> awesome. I'm actually getting into collecting these popcorn buckets now. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. Um, they also gave out little pins. I saw this in Dolby, so I got the little Ecto-1 there, and I'm a huge pin collector, so that's very nice. So very happy to have that. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. I don't think I have anything else to say. Um, again, seven and a half. It was good. It just wasn't great, you know. It was fine. It was all right. Whatever you want to call it. It was just, it was okay. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know if I'll be seeing it again. I did see the last one twice because, again, I was that was one of my most hyped movies ever. Um, this one, I might go see it again. I don't know. Just to support the movie and to support the franchise, obviously, because, again, diehard fan. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. Yeah. So, um, I hope they do another one, you know, just at least one more, you know, just to make it a trilogy. And if you want to stop there, stop there or whatever, you know, you don't have to continue making these movies endlessly. Obviously it's just going to get tiresome. Um, so yeah, very cool, very cool movie. Um, just not everything I wanted, you know, so, <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts of the film in the comments and how you would rank all the movies. You know, if you want to include that other one, feel free to. Um, I'm never going to watch it. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. So thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Bye-bye.